This is GabNet, the great American broadcast network. Talk like you've never heard it before. Everybody, Alex Bennett, the Ramble. It goes till midnight Eastern Daylight Time. It is now about five minutes past uh, 10 o'clock, going on six minutes past 10 o'clock on the East Coast of the United States. So wherever you are in the United States, accommodate or in the, or in the world, accommodate for that. And you can tell whether it's live or not. Otherwise, you're hearing a recording, but that's fun too. In fact, our guest right now is a recording as well. So let's uh, join him, shall we? Ladies and gentlemen, who do we have here but the inimitable Larry Bubbles <laughs> Brown? Hello, Lawrence. Hello, Alex. How are you? Oh, it's great living here in the state that's about to well, go up in flames. Well, no, you see, see, earthquake. see, don't say How come, that. Uh, don't, Manhattan never gets an earthquake. Well, don't say that because this is being played a week later. So oh. the fire took place. So remember that fire that happened last <laughs> week? Thank God that thing blew away. Yeah, right. Uh, the air's clear now where you are? <laughs> oh, clear as a bell. Okay, good. Now we've... Because you were ruining the illusion that we do two of these at a time. <laughs> and the state is still in flames out there. You know. Oh, boy. So you've been working at all lately? Any interesting been gigs? Been working with uh, your old buddy Rob Schneider. Oh, you know, the- I had him on a couple of weeks ago. Oh, great. Yeah, yeah. Uh, very nice conversation. He gets he gets very political, which I like, you know. Uh-huh. And I don't agree with everything he says, but I like the fact that he has the guts to say it. Yeah, yeah. he's very ballsy, a good guy. Yeah, I, I, I like Rob. I've, you know, I've, uh, I told him I've always become very prote- protective of him because I watch Family Guy, and I can't tell you how many times on Family Guy they've done a Rob schneider joke and i told yeah, they I, used to do them on uh didn't they used to do it on south park too a lot of rob probably schneider probably you know but i mean uh and i i get upset when i see that even though i like family guy a lot because i happen to like rob you know i happen to know him as a fairly stand-up guy and um uh so it, i become very protective about that and I t- mentioned to him about the Family Guy stuff, and he said, "Yeah, the problem with the Family Guy stuff is it's just mean spirited. It's not." Uh-huh. He said, "If they want to make fun of me, that's one thing, but they're just mean spirited about it." So, wonder yeah. why they're going after him. Well, I mean, I I don't know. I guess because he's 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 in a lot of stuff. You know, he's done what fifty films or something like that. Fifty movies, yeah. Yeah. Now, you, people go, what, 50 movies? Yeah, well, I mean, sometimes he just went, there was an Adam Sandler film with one line, but then he had his own films and so on, and, you know, and then and there was a whole bunch of TV stuff, including Seinfeld and, uh, of course, Saturday Night Live. And I, But I, beca- I, I somewhat become protective of him. And I know he's got his faults, I'm sure, and he's, he's, you know, not the most perfect person in the world. I mean, there are some people who have arguments about him. But I like him, and he's always been good to me, and I guess I've been good to him. And so it's been a very nice relationship over the years. So you, you, yeah, yeah. So you, still, you, you work with him constantly? Uh, he's worked with me quite a bit this year, and uh, he really he pays me nicely, and we have a great time. So, uh, yeah, n- nothing but goodness. Now, where, where, have you had to go places around the country in order to work with him? Went to Vegas, and then uh, up in Cash Creek and uh, a casino in the middle of nowhere up here in Northern California, and then uh, a town called uh, Redding, yeah. which is... Also in the middle of nowhere, but uh, yeah, he's he's going out. He's doing his show on Netflix, then he goes out and he works like every week. He's like I was saying, he's got such a work ethic. He works every weekend. He's flying somewhere and he's yeah, very busy. I, we can't. Talk- I got into comic because comedy because I'm lazy. But I think the guys that, the guys that do well, I think tend to work very hard. Well, do you think? Where do you think that comes from? Uh, I say it comes from a certain amount of insecurity. You know the guys that work uh, really hard. Yeah, I would say so. As uh, I would say, anything in the yeah, 
sure. You know, that, that, that Rob, I think, feels that any day all this could be taken away. And he's got to work it every day. Other That's people. I've, uh, Dana Carvey told me that. He said Dennis Miller would always say to him, he's always worried that it could all end tomorrow. And, uh, and it I think did. that's probably a common theme in this business. <laughs> and it did. <laughs> yeah. No, well, I mean, no, you, you know, I think, um, I think that drove me to a certain extent. You know, I mean, when, when, when am I going to be out of, out of work next? You know? Yeah, I mean, it could literally end. <laughs> this business is so weird, but uh, there's no security in it at all, and it attracts the most insecure people. Oh, yeah. Uh, and that, uh, that's the part I could never figure out, is why yeah. a person who's insecure, such as you or me, yeah. go into yeah, why business. Would we, why do we want to get up and talk in front of thousands of strangers? Well, worse than that, we go into businesses that are fraught with constant rejection. Rejection mm-hmm. is part of the uh, part of the uh, uh, th- game we play. You know, you go out for a part, you don't get the part. You know, you get the part, and then you're worried about what the next part's going to be. Mm-hmm. You know, I mean, I who is it I was talking to? I think it was this was Chuck McCann, maybe who I was talking to, and he said to me, he said every time he says I do a lot of movies. He said, but every time I sign out, at the end, you have to kind of sign papers, you know, to leave and be off the right, picture. Yeah. He said, I don't know if that's the last picture I'm ever going to make. And I said, yeah, but you work constantly. And he said, no, but, you know, I don't know that it's not. I don't know if it was Chuck McCann. I can't remember who it was. I do know that uh, I had on, uh, what's his name from Star Trek, um, uh, you know, Captain Picard. Uh, uh, Picard. Yeah, yeah, Captain Picard, who played... Uh, uh, oh, God, my mind's a blank today. But anyway, I was interviewing him, and I said, God, this has been really nice. Uh, come back and see us sometime soon. He said, well, if I get another job. <laughs> really? And I said, you know, you're working. Every time I see you, you're in another movie, and you're worried that this is your last pic-. He says, every picture is the last picture. He said... You don't know there's going to be another one after this. And I went, well, if he's that way, you know, if he has that fear, then uh, I guess mine is nothing in comparison because, you know, I have a reason to fear it. You know, I could be out of a job tomorrow and never work again. And when I was fired at uh, Sirius XM, I said to the people who were firing me, well, I guess this is the last job I'll ever have. And they went, ah, no, you'll work again. You're, you're, you're a pro. You're <laughs> everybody. You know. Well, I haven't worked again because I'm in a business that's dying. In fact, I heard, you ready for this? You ready for the, the statistics? I heard from a friend of mine who was a consultant in this business that since 2008, there have been 60,000 radio jobs lost. Can you wow. imagine that? 60,000. And I'm supposed to go looking for work? Yeah, no, where, where is it going to be in five years? Y- yeah, but oh, it's, it's terrible. It's, it's getting worse and worse and worse. And some of these companies are going bankrupt. And it's, you know. But, I, you know, I mean, I, I was right. I mean, I, I've never... I'm going to, you know, I'll never probably work a radio station again or a radio outfit again, you know, so. It's a shame. It's such a great medium, and I don't know if it, uh, if tech, if it was doomed to end anyway because of technology, but. Uh, well, why I'm a semi-failure on the Internet is because I'm still doing radio, you know, and I'm not doing Internet. Mm-hmm. Uh, and, uh. I guess I, I guess I have too much training in, in in radio, so that I have a tendency to bring radio programs to the internet as opposed to internet programs to the internet. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, radio's great. Radio's great. Radio was a wonderful medium, but it's dead. It's gone. It's a technology. It's an old technology. You know, I mean, come on. How old is the technology of radio? It goes back to whenever Marconi sent the first signal. Yeah, the 20s. <laughs> no, I mean, before that. I'm trying, I'm trying to remember when radio first emerged somewhere like in the early 20s, late teens. So if you figure that, 
It, it's uh, almost 100 years old. 100 years old. And has lasted as a medium for 100 years. All right? Uh, how many mediums back then still exist today? You know, and it's, it's an old technology. I mean, I was on satellite radio. Believe it or not, that's an old technology, too. I mean, who needs a fucking satellite when uh, they're putting uh, Wi-Fi in your cars or they're putting, you know, uh, Internet reception in your car and you can listen to the anything that's on the Internet. You can listen to this program on the Internet. You don't need Sirius. You don't need a satellite where every time you go under a big red wood, the signal disappears. You know, that's old technology. So... Um, you know, and, and all those satellites are getting rusty and old, floating around up there. They have and to. How sit. much longer is uh, broadcast TV going to be around? Uh, broadcast TV. Well, broadcast TV is really gone. I mean, how many people do you know have an antenna to pick up their local stations? Oh, don't tell me you do. I do. <laughs> <laughs> do you get HD? I mean, do you have one of those HD antennas? It's got yeah, it gets a good picture. It gets uh, it's got a converter box, so I can pick up the signal, and uh, I get all the local channels for free. Okay, and you don't have you don't you don't have don't tell me you don't have any kind of internet. Well, you, of course you don't have internet. No, of course not. You, you could get internet in your apartment, right? Yeah, I keep saying I'm going to do that. I've been procrastinating for about seven years now. It, why? What? Why are you procrastinating? I uh, just uh, dealing with AT and T or Comcast just gives me a migraine. So. <laughs> if I could, if it could just be here and send me the bill and was done, I'd do it. You don't. You don't, just, you don't have FiOS in San Francisco, do you? No, I don't think so. Uh, because FiOS is pretty terrific. Uh, I just got it installed. And uh, I I think it's just the best. It's fiber optics. Oh wait a minute! This is going way too far for you. This is way over my head. This is way over your head. Uh, I've heard that like I, the United States is like other countries have so much better and faster internet than we do. So you think we'd lead the world, but apparently not. Well, I have very fast internet courtesy of FiOS. I mean, I I have a almost a gig up and a gig down. On my internet speed. I mean, that's ten times more than most people have, uh, and it, it's it's just the best, you know. Um, but uh, I, I I still I I uh, I wonder about you know uh, ab about where all this is going because when there's when it comes to TV, over the air TV, I. What maybe maybe a handful of people now watch over the air TV. Most people have cable, or they you know have mm -hmm. some or or satellite or something. You know, so all, all that's but, disappearing. Yeah, but the uh, the broad the uh, made the major networks are getting uh, what a tenth of the audience they used to get fifteen years ago. Uh, they're getting um, oh God, I don't know it it. It's lower. It's much lower. You know, I mean, it used well, to... Well, I know Seinfeld was getting like 30 million viewers, and I know a show can stay on now if it's got 3 million. Y yeah. Yeah. Uh, but I, the question is, how do, how do the networks make money out of that? Well, you see, the thing is, uh, yeah, because there's so many... There's so, it's like the Internet. You know, people say to me, well, how are you doing with the listeners to your shows? And I said, well, I'm getting what I consider sucko numbers. I said, but that's by radio standards. I said, by Internet standards, most people would be happy to have as many listeners as I have. Hmm. You know? So yeah. when, when you think about it, what am I competing against? I'm competing against 50,000 podcasts. At least, yeah. You, you know. I mean, I remember I used to do a podcast. We, I invented podcasting. I know. You know. And nobody believes me when I tell them that, but I then show them the, 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 the proof of it, and they go, I guess you, you did. Uh, I, I had this thing where, I, do you remember when I was out of work, I would do a little show every day, and then I would put it on my website, or I would put it yeah. online, and then a mm -hmm. guy I knew 
who was a technology guy who loved my show, said, well, let's, look, I just invented something for you. And I said, what's it called? So we called it Auto Alex. And what it was was a program you put on your computer, and every day it would go to my site to see if there was a new episode. And if there was a new episode, it would download it. So when you came home, it was there on your computer. Well, this predated podcast by what? Five, ten years? years? No, five, years. Uh, maybe maybe seven, eight years. Yeah. We invented the podcast. Nobody else was doing this. And it was just out you of You get money for that. Well, yeah. Yeah. But, you know, I mean, we never patented the technology. We didn't see that there was any future in it. The only way, w reason we did it was for the convenience of my audience to be able to keep up with every show. So uh, and so that's when I was doing it on online, and then we did, uh, you know, we did the, the first internet uh, television network. I mean, we were. I remember that. Yeah, I, I learned my lesson. Don't ever be the first at anything. <laughs> the no. first is always forgotten. Be the second. Let the other guy go through all the heartbreak, right? Mm -hmm. uh, and all the work that it takes to get this thing done. And then you can come along and, you know, yeah. You don't want to be the Philo Farnsworth. Ex Philo Farnsworth is a perfect example. I explained to the audience who Philo T. Farnsworth was. Philo was a San Francisco boy who actually invented television, and no one knows who he is. Well, except he, you. <laughs> for years, he sued Sarnoff, you know. Had a suit, constant suit going with Sarnoff and RCA over television. And ultimately, I think he ultimately won and got some kind of payout, but that was so many years later, the guy was a broken man. Uh, but Philo T. Farnsworth it literally invented television because he was a kid and he worked on a farm owned by his father, and his father would send him out and have him, you know, uh, make, uh, what do they call it, the rose for the corn to be planted in, you know, you would take a, mm -hmm. you know what I'm talking about. Yeah. Dig those endless lines of ditches across. A, and as he was doing that, he said, gee, that'd be an interesting way to put a picture on something. What what you do is you, you, you just scan back and forth a lot. And so he came up with that basic concept of television when I think he was 13. Wow, so he's a genius. And he went and he, he took to, took it to his uh, his science uh, teacher at, at his high school, and the, kid, the guy said, this is amazing, this is terrific. And so when he got out of school, he got himself a place, a business place in San Francisco. In fact, I think that there's a plaque there. where on he Green had, Street, on yeah. On Green Street. And he literally invented the way of... of Taking a picture, putting it on a on a on a tube, and using scanning lines, do the picture. But at the same time, RCA was working on something very similar, and I think they may have even stolen it from him. Uh, and um, uh, so they they were the bigger company, right? And so they just came out with television, and uh, the Sarnoff was t called uh, the Steve Jobs of his day, and and all that. Meanwhile, Philo, Philo T. Farnsworth is like, you know, filing for bankruptcy protection and things like that, trying to survive. And he decides to take um, uh, Sarnoff to court. But, you know, Sarnoff's pockets were deeper than, than his were. And I think Sarnoff won the first couple of rounds, but ultimately Philo T. Farnsworth was uh, credited with being the inventor of television. Yeah, that, was, that would actually might be a great screenplay if somebody could write it. Well, there's another one similar to that. Have you ever heard of a guy named William Freeze Green? Nope. Ask, ask anybody from England about William Freeze Green, and they'll say, oh, he's the guy who invented movies. It seems, really? Yes. It seems as though William Freeze Green invented uh, the idea of, uh, of film and photographing on film and all of that and developed it before Edison did. And Edison kind of stole the idea and patented it and uh, became the guy known as the guy who invented movies. But it was really William Freeze Green. 
Yeah, I've heard Ed- Edison kind of was maybe not the <laughs> nicest guy from what I've heard. Well, I mean, I think it, he. I, it's not. He was certainly a great, a good businessman. It's not that, it that he way. stole stuff, okay? Uh, although I think maybe he did, but he adapted it, and then because he was the big guy, everybody would listen to him. Mm-hmm. You know, uh, that would listen to him, and uh, uh, that's uh, uh, you know, it's very hard to go up a guy like, against a Sarnoff or an Edison. Because they have the pockets and they have the the name, and so everybody will be money. Exactly, exactly. Um, there was another guy who was who was there was one other guy. I'm trying to remember his name now. I'm trying to remember what he did exactly, but he pretty much oh he invented basically he invented uh, sound movies. Uh, the Forest. Uh, well, I can't remember the Forest's Lita Forest claimed to have done it because he took his he invented the vacuum tube you know and then mm-hmm. he somehow applied that to audio for movies but uh, his uh, his process wasn't as good as this other guy's process which is the one that obviously in the end prevailed because the difference in, in sound when his movies started being played was 100% clearer and better in theaters uh, because he also invented uh, amplification for the theaters. I'm trying to remember what his name was. And he was fighting for years against Lee DeForest, who was constantly trying to take claim for being the inventor of audio in movies, sound movies. Uh, not the one that uh, Warner's did where it was on a record. That, that went away really fast, and, the, and the, these... Uh, processes where the sound was on the side of the film uh, replaced it. But, I mean, there are all these guys who didn't have the resources uh, to do it, uh, and they were, they were, people don't remember them as the inventor of something. And it's, it's pretty, you know, so, anyway. Yeah, I, there's so much of that that goes, yeah. when something new is like that, there's so- there's guys that are making and losing fortunes just on a. So I will never be remembered. I, my friend, as the inventor of the podcast. The podcast. <laughs> uh, Apple will, because they then came out with the process where people would do these little shows, and then uh, you would say you want to subscribe to them, and then they would be delivered to your device every day. Uh, and no one's going to say, well, you know, that was invented by Alex Bennett and his friend. Uh, no, so I'm not, I'm not going to, I know, nobody's holding any great, um, uh, what could we call it? We're not going to get rich. Nobody's <laughs> holding any, 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 any great accolades for, for me for inventing the podcast. We I mean, should make a wiki page about this. I mean, porn doesn't even, re- uh, doesn't even, uh, recognize me. Because we put Midnight Blue on cable television, and we were basically uh, the first show about sex and what we did in in being able to promote pornography back in the day. You know, nobody nobody's uh, saying, "Come on down to Vegas this year. We want to give you a little uh, lifetime achievement award for helping a staff." Oh, you know what it was? I was the first guy ever to do porn on videotape. Okay. Yeah. Which completely has ruined the business because all of Took a sudden, the money out of it. Yeah. Well, before guys had to, guys had to do it on film, so they had to buy f- film stock and they had to edit it. And you know what they would do is they would go and buy these things called film ends. You would go to uh, I can't don't know where you would go to buy them, but what happened was is movie companies when they were making films they wouldn't use up the whole reel of film because if they felt it was coming too close to the end. They would stop there, and so they were all the, what they called the film ends. And a lot of these guys would go out and buy the film ends and make entire movies using these little, you know, couple of minutes of film. Uh, and uh, it uh, it looks like it too back in those days. So yeah. <laughs> when I came up with the idea about doing video, at uh, first I was told by distributors that you couldn't. What, what on video? And then all of a sudden we did it, and then everybody started doing it because it was so cheap. Yeah, you know, you did tape. It was 
virtually inexpensive by comparison to film, and then you didn't have to send it out to a lab to be processed. Well, film was a fortune, yeah. And also, when you did video, you knew what you had immediately, you know. So, so anyway, I'm I I, I was an inventor, and uh, 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 there were all those versions of Sarnoff out there who screwed me over. Hey, we've run out of time. And what well, and what do we do? Talk about one of my favorite subjects. Me. Time has flown by. Uh. <laughs> hey, let's do this again next time, okay? Yeah, that was fun. Okay. <laughs> this is real fun. Ladies and gentlemen, the inimitable Larry Bubbles. He knows everything, yeah. every day. <laughs> everything. He's a, he's, he's he's the, a highly functioning savant. He is the living rain man. <laughs> Larry Bubbles Brown. This is GabNet, the great American broadcast network. Talk like you've never heard it before. And uh, let me see here. Let me get a picture of me up on the screen. Uh, There we go. Hi, how are you? Oh, well, I see I have my cap on so you can't see me. I don't want anybody to see this hideous face. Don't look at me. I'm hideous. Anyway, uh, thank you, Larry. We really love Larry Bubbles Brown. He's one of our favorite people of all. Okay, it's just too bad we can't have a video of him because when I have a video of him, when I have a video of anybody, there are more people watch it because you know all they they just don't want to hear things because of the, the Facebook Live. I'm I really I don't know. Gee, why I'm I'm a radio guy. Why am I doing TV? You know. And is this a this is a face for radio, right? It's not a face for TV. Anyway, let me get rid of uh, all the music stuff here. Let me bring up the Skype because that will get us ready for the citizens panels. Wait a minute, I want to get rid of uh, uh, last night's uh, people and turn on uh, the things so that we can uh, uh, do tonight. Uh, let me get rid of these. Let me get rid of that. Let me get rid of that. Okay. All right, so now we're, our lines are open, so you can call us on Skype, and uh, then we can uh, we can talk to the panel. As you can see right now, it's empty because nobody's calling, okay? So give us a call, folks. We would love to hear from you, okay? All right, okay, okay, all right, all right, okay, okay, all right. Anyway, um, I have nothing to say particularly. Um, except that I'm, uh, uh, I have nothing to say. Imagine, you know, I, I, I wondered if that day would ever happen because, you know, the red light would come on. Oh, wait a minute. Hold on a second. That's why I can't talk because the red light isn't on. The red light goes on, the on the air light goes on, and immediately I'm able to just ad lib like crazy. Okay. But uh, it, far be it for me to be able to do it, you know, just when nobody's calling. Hello, Phil. Hey, yeah. I'm calling. It's funny, you know, whenever you're the first guy to call, and this is a problem that I have sometimes when I have interviews with like Durst and, uh, and any of my guests, when you're the first guy to call, uh, out you, of sync. you're out of sync. And then all of a sudden, when you uh, call... You're, when the second person calls, you are in sync. Now talk to me. See, there's a second person. Right. Uh, see? Yeah. Cool. Yeah. You see? You're in sync now. Isn't that amazing? Uh, All right. Fuck. That's pretty fuck. good. Scott, fuck. Scott brings the world to a level playing ground. Level playing field. Scott, Whatever. where have you been? <laughs> I, I, well, I was away to Iowa, and then I you know I got my football on Friday nights, and and I uh, just been kind of sleepy. I mean, so. yeah, because I haven't even heard you on 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 the uh, the intersection. Well, I usually listen to you, and you put me to sleep before I call in on the oh, intersection. Oh, fuck you, <laughs> fuck you, <laughs> fuck you. Uh, hey, did you take a knee, Scott? <laughs> What's that? Sorry. What? Did you take a knee? Uh, I'm thinking about doing it. Yeah. Yeah. Let me okay. ask you something. When you pray, what do you do? You go on your knees. Right. So if you're kneeling, and when you're when you're being knighted by the queen, what do you do? Oh, Yo, you sit down, you don't t- you? And and also to show your obedience to the queen, it's called what? Taking the knee. Yeah. So but taking the knee. Genuine. Is, wait a minute. Wait, no, no. He uh, taking the knee is actually a uh, a sign of obedience. Actually. 
So, I mean, our president doesn't even know what kneeling is. It, yeah, well, it, it, <laughs> only when the white guy does it. It's only, only when, when the white guy does it. The white guy yeah. does it, yeah. When he's being knighted by the queen. Yeah. 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 So. Or even the white football players. It's only when they do it. It's okay. Yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, white football players? Yeah. Oh. It's okay. That aren't retired? No. No. Well, now let me see here. If a Not white, if a white football player did it, because there are there now. are there are still some white football players. Um, uh, if they're uh, if they're white and they did the kneeling thing, would that be appropriate or would that be racist? No, it's it's okay. It, it's okay it's because okay. I mean because you're white and you're but you're protesting what the original protest was. It was over the killing of blacks in America by cops. Well, you know. the white guy, when he does it, he's not protesting, though. Yeah, but well, that's what I'm saying. Then should he yeah. do it? Or Well, they do. The, you know what I saw well, they, they did do? Them? What they did do, however, rather than kneel or do anything like that, they all let locked arms. The, the coach and the owner of the team and stuff, they locked arms. So. Well, Listen, it was, they, it, was all, it, it, was all a, it was all a big fuck you to Trump anyway, you know. Yeah. Well, it's, uh, they were just trying to keep their pockets from getting picked, so that's why they locked each other's arms. What? I don't get well, the joke. Well, if, if you lock arms, is they can't because, pick their pockets. Because black steal money? Is that what you're implying here, Phil? It was just, there was whites out there, too, locking arms. No, I think all the, the football players steal the money. Boy, you should be, you should be writing uh, Trump's jokes. You get yeah, well, in, you... uh, <laughs> who's that guy that was in uh, Florida today, uh, Spencer? Uh, I, I, I uh, yeah, uh, Richard Spencer. He was. Um, it cost uh, the uh, Gainesville, uh, Florida State uh, University, it cost him six hundred thousand dollars in uh, in security to to let the guy talk. And oh, 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 oh! This, yeah, this was uh, wasn't this one of the racists from uh, Charlottesville? Yeah, he's the, he's the big time racist that set up the Charlotte thing. Yeah, and uh, was it Charlottesville I, or was it Charlotte? It was Charlottesville. Uh, you know, I think it was Charlottesville or something yeah. like that. Charlottesville, yeah. Virginia. Yeah. yeah. And uh, so anyway, he spoke at, uh, is it FSU, Florida State University? Yeah. I think it was at Florida. It was at Florida. Uh, and the fucking yeah. State. Oh, Gainesville. Fu Gainesville fu is not Florida State. That's Tallahassee is FSU. FSU so, sounds like something you tell somebody when you don't like them. FSU. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and the horse you rode in on. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> That's pretty funny. That's yeah. a good one. Hey, I, I would get a bell on uh, the next show for that. So nobody, no, I, you know, I, I was I was right not running the video last night. I ran decided to run the video again on Facebook Live and uh, on Facebook rather than Facebook Live. Mm -hmm. You know, I I put it over on Facebook Live and everybody got panicked. I don't know how to get that. <laughs> so so I I went back to Facebook. Uh, and everybody loved it so much. We have the largest video audience we've had in a long time. Tonight? T and tonight, it's back oh. to nothing. It's back oh, okay. to like, I don't know, what is there, eight people watching or something. So your link is not uh, conducive to people watching. Is that what you're saying? My what? The link now, when you put it on oh, wait, Facebook when, Live. No, I, 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 actually, the, I got more the, when I put it on the, Facebook, Facebook Live than I'm getting right earlier. now. You know, you're frozen. Or you were frozen. Now you're not. Uh, uh, no. I, you know, oh, I, interesting. I just got off the phone with Apple Care uh, on this uh, Skype. Thing. Well, they don't really. Well, I know they don't. <laughs> but, uh, so the, the guy said, I said, look, um, when I'm on Skype, uh, every once in a while, you know, maybe every 40 seconds or, or three minutes, five minutes, my screen freezes. And uh, I have to move my cursor. And when I do that, uh, it unfreezes. Oh, wait a minute. I bet I, know, I bet I know the first answer they gave you. Well, that's another product and it's not ours. Exactly. Is that what they, they told, told you? Skype. Huh? Yes, yes. They told me to call the Skype developers. That oh, they yeah. Couldn't oh yeah. Oh yeah. You find the number. Find right. the well, number. That's what I told them. Uh, so anyway, uh, you know, I I used my sales prowess, and and the guy said, "Well, maybe Phil, if you use Option, Command, P, and R 
on uh, on reboot. So you reboot the thing. Yeah, and, uh, like, like that uh, uh, does away resets. with your it resets, but it resets. What does it reset? It resets your parameters, I think. Yeah. yeah. Well, anyway, uh, I did that just before I uh, signed on to Skype and and called you, mm -hmm. uh, and it's still freezing. So uh, I, I don't. Oh, yeah, I don't yeah know. they tell you to do all that, and uh, you know, I mean, I I love it how when in in the computer world there is something wrong with a product, so you bring it to the attention of the company whose product is it is, and where it was like maybe working yesterday, but it's not working today, and you didn't yeah. do anything to your machine that you didn't do yesterday. In fact, you didn't even turn it off. It's been running all that time, yeah. and now it's not working. And you try to tell them that it's their fault. They will never assume that, first of all, it's their fault. Oh, of course. oh, they have no but fault with their with their product at all. He says that, well, if it was happening with FaceTime, we could help you. Uh, but I said, I don't use FaceTime. I use Skype. <laughs> yeah. Who the fuck uses FaceTime? That's, I, people who use FaceTime use it accidentally from their iPhone. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> you know? Exactly. You know, uh, quite often I fall asleep with the phone in my hand. Yeah. And I end up calling people at four o'clock in the morning and sometimes FaceTiming. And, you know, when you're snoring and FaceTiming, it's, it's entertaining. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, it, but but all I'm saying is, is that, that you always I always get that. It's like, well, you know, you're you're using a product that's not ours. Yes. But it's a pro you you have a computer. It's called a Macintosh. Mm -hmm. And things right. are made for it. If you didn't have anybody make anything for it, you wouldn't sell a single fucking computer, right? Right. Yeah, so, exactly. So you want to make sure that things, all things run with your computer. Now, I will agree. Some companies, I mean, Apple will, for instance, send out their newest program months ahead of time so these companies can test their their. Uh, their programs with it to make sure that they work with the, with the, the new Mac or whatever, with the new Mac yeah. OS. Beta uh, testers. And maybe they don't do it, and then you got nothing but trouble. You know, you got right. nothing well, but trouble. Well, those are beta testers. Uh, well, no they, aren't, no, they aren't beta testers. What happens is they send it out to Microsoft. They send it out to Adobe. Oh, oh, and they oh, work it. They, they work with it and see that their stuff will work with the new OS. And if it won't, they will make changes to it so that it will work with the operating system. Uh, but, you know, a company like Skype, for instance, I'll tell you why I bet it doesn't work well on the Mac. I'll tell you right now. Because it's a Microsoft product. And they do uh, stuff to make sure it won't work right. It used to work. Uh, and even when I had just Sierra, not yeah. the high Sierra, uh, it uh, it froze once in a while, but not like it's doing it now. Yeah. Yeah. You're breathing too heavy, Mike. <laughs> I'm not even breathing! You're breathing too heavy. Move, your, move, breathing, your, move, move your mouthpiece away from your mouth a bit. Yeah, there. yeah. Stop breathing so much. But no, oh, you, you, you're a mouth breather. No, he is. A, you have a tendency to chortle and make noises and stuff. Oh right? yeah, but Mike, do you realize that if you're a mouth breather, breather, you could be accused of being a uh, Republican? You know. Uh, oh shit! <laughs> you wouldn't want that. Oh, you wouldn't shit. want that. Hello, John Rockwell. How are you? Hello. Oh, yeah. Shit. Gee, I'm really, gee, we're I'm up really, to, we're, I'm really pissed at Facebook. How's that? I can give you. A, you want me? I, at some point, if you want me to get into that, I, right well, now. Well, you know, like, right now I've got I'll nine sleep. people on Facebook, and uh, 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 last night I had like, I had like almost twenty people when Durst was on. Right? You mm -hmm. know, uh, and and Durst well, is I terrific. To bubbles. You guys had a good good. Yeah, talk. but like you know, it. if it's video, they'll watch it. But then now we're into the show, and now we don't have any people either. So fuck yeah, I'm going to stop doing the TV what? version. You know why? Why do it? Not the, this is not the question that the thing that made me pissed off, mm. but I noticed when on on the um, on the Facebook thing while you're talking during everything, there's this whole stream of emojis going by of hearts and things. Who does that? Are there people sitting there hitting? Oh well, you can do that. And, you can, and, yeah, uh, you can do that, uh, folks. Right now, if you're if you're watching us, 
Uh, put some hearts and some emojis and stuff it. to flop across the screen. Because yeah. you have yeah, a no, thing right there. there where it says, And it only you know, says there are eight people watching. <laughs> it's like, well, Pete, I'll right. say there go. Uh, well, nobody, nobody's doing the emoji thing, so. Oh, okay. We see now, Tom, I, I, I can you swipe across the screen and move that away so you don't get it? Like Tinder? <laughs> no, no, no. You, you, you have to see sure. this. That's Never people you, like applauding know. and I'm saying they it. love you, but nobody's doing it now. What, what's with you uh, folks? There you go. Jeez. No, they were, but they were. Even during the whole thing with uh, your interview with, with, with Larry Bubbles Brown, they were like, it was all down at the lower, you know, I just, I don't know what that, you know, how to do that. I don't want to do it. I was just sort of surprised. Yeah. It's just weird. But that's not why, that's not why I'm pissed. <laughs> oh, here we go. See, I can do it. Wait a minute. I'll, I'll, I'll do a frowny face. Uh, yeah. Let's see. Oh, hey, they're oh. not working. That's the reason why uh -huh. they're having a problem. They're not working. Well, uh, Facebook is screwing up my screwing up my news feed the last few days. And I don't know why anybody else seems to have this problem. I, I put it up a couple of times, mentioned it on Facebook. And why don't you people have, they, they've sort of said, well, we haven't had this problem. But hmm. for some reason or another, a few, uh, maybe within the last, in the last week, I'll mm -hmm. be scrolling down the news feed. Usually I, I like the most recent stories because I might have logged on a few hours earlier, so I don't need to hear see the top stories. But I'll you know, and normally you can go you can you can scroll down and get like five hours or more. You can get like thirty or forty or fifty different postings that were given put on your Facebook page. But recently I've been getting I just you know, froze. maybe oh, fifteen oh, or oh, twenty. Oh, yeah. It stops and there's a Facebook line that says if you want to see more posts, you should, you know, go and get more friends. We'll have you connect in here, find oh. more friends. Oh, and people, we'll, we'll people are doing it. Posts. People are doing it like crazy. I had see. I'm not using my my Chrome any longer because it keeps freezing up. Uh, at least on, well, on, on this machine. But I'm on Safari, and then you don't too. get those. You don't get those. Uh, uh, those emoji things running across. So thank you, everybody. I get for it. I'm doing on Safari. It. I'm seeing them all over the place. But uh, oh, no, really? But the, You're on Safari and you see them all over the yeah. place? Yeah. Well, I'm not looking at it now. I'm I'm just on no, Skype. No, see here. Here they come on on on. Maybe I'll. Maybe uh, I should here they come on back. Chrome. No. But if I go look at it on uh, on, uh, do it again, folks. Do it some more. Yeah, do uh, more. Yeah. If, if love I, this. Love this man even more. Yeah. Lo send love me more. even more. Send him more hearts. Yeah, See, more here they movies. come. Here they come on on uh, on Chrome, but they don't happen on Safari. Huh. Well, I don't know. No, but what Maybe pissed me Safari. off tonight? What pissed me off tonight about Facebook? Looks like a bunch of farting the hearts. The I'm what? on. The fewer posts they'll let me see until they stop and say, "We're not showing any, any more posts until you get you know, to, you know, you should get more friends." It's like, what is this blackmail? Actually, tonight, I was on, what listening to your pro program with 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 Larry, mm -hmm. and I could see, I could scroll for about, I mean, me ten or fifteen or twenty things, and it stopped. But then later, just before I logged on now, when I went on to most most recent. It wouldn't let me see anything. Only the one that, that, only the posting I put on saying Facebook is not letting me see anything. It says if you'd like to see more posts, you know, get friends. What it's if I don't want to get any more friends? It's, it's <laughs> what if it was anyway? Why don't you just watch a news They're site? They're fake friends. They're fake friends. That's what. Yeah. Oh, that's no, true. I'm, I'm, these are friends thing. I mean, this news sites. I know you're right. There are a lot of. You know, I mean, seven eighths of the stuff is crap anyway. But I mean, I just found out that a good friend of mine's mother died. But now I can't. You know, I saw that half an hour ago. But if I go on right now, it won't even let me see that. It's like so that was death in real it, time. It's blackmail. It's Facebook. It's Facebook blackmail. They won't let me see more than a couple of posts unless I, unless I find more friends. Right. It's like, excuse me. You know, what if I want to kill us off some? Maybe I want to unfriend. Maybe a few you don't want to have friends. You know. I know. Yeah. No, it's just, but that's just like, you know, what is, what gives them the right to decide that, that to, to, to tell me how many friends I'm supposed to have? <laughs> yeah. right. By the way, by the way, in, in the chat, tell me, have you been getting the video pretty good? Are you guys are watching the video, aren't you, one of you? Uh, no. no. No, I'm watching, I'm, I'm watching the Skype thing, but I can, you, I can go back on to Facebook. Yeah. yeah but, if they'll let me, if they'll let me even get on Facebook. Yeah. As I said, this got worse. Well, in the folks, last just let hour. me know if you can see us okay yeah. and if it's if it's holding because I had, I had fewer it's not holding fewer, on girlfriends uh, chrome either so you know i don't know now, I'm you gonna, know well let me see but it's solid uh, as a rock on safari yeah, yeah. 
Yeah. Well, let's see. I mean, it, you know. Mm-hmm. Well, they're letting me. Oh, wow. They're letting me see. They're letting me on top stories. I get to see four stories now instead of instead of six. How lovely. <laughs> yeah. uh, I can see you. If I go to a notification that mm-hmm. says Alex Bennett is on, I can I can do that. Yeah. But if I just want to scroll down and see what people have been doing recently, they're, they're, they're shutting me off. I mean, yeah. literally, it says, do you want oh. to see more posts? The more friends you add, the more posts, photos, and videos you'll see. Oh, I know and what they're, what they're, I know what they're trying to tell you is that when you have when you friend when you become a friend of somebody, a post mm. shows up, and the less friends you have, the less posts you're going to get. Yeah, but that used to be. But a couple of weeks ago, I could yeah. I could. Scroll I mean, don't you don't you get a, don't you get a post uh, on 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 Facebook saying Alex Bennett is live or Gabnet is live? Oh yeah, or whatever? oh yeah. yeah, I get that. Yeah. Well, here it is. I get that from the in, in notifications. Alex Bennett is live now. Here you are. Let me make sure I don't accidentally. I'm going to shut off your your speaker. There we go. Yeah. And I am seeing below the bottom of the posting where I am and everything. I see all sorts of of hearts and and thumbs up and and smiles and it, from from right to left, and that's Renee, uh, on, on, Renee Collins says that when she pushes right. one of the emojis. Yeah, I know. I oh, just yeah. saw that her, it, her video stops. Right, but <laughs> I just did, I, I push the uh, angry face. Yeah. I can't even I can't even get one of them. Oh well, on they, my, they go too on fast. <laughs> on, on my iPad, I push the okay. angry face, and it did not stop my video. Oh, my emoji! Oh, if I put an emoji on, yeah, I was trying to click on the ones that were zipping past here. I think the re- <laughs> I think the reason why my uh, my uh, uh, Skype freezes yeah, just, up on Skype Chrome is because I have a lot of tabs. I have like twenty tabs. Oh, okay. And I'll bet it's just too much for poor old Chrome because Google's another company we can all hate too. Nice. Uh, I only have one thing Actually. open on my uh, computer, and that's Skype, uh, because I just rebooted it and I reset my parameters, and uh, and I only have one thing open, and it still <laughs> occasionally freezes. Yeah. Well, they say, hey, it's it's Skype's problem. Get a hold of Skype. Just to get well, a hold of them. I'll exactly. do it. By the way, that, folks, this is a big joke. In case you've ever listened to this program, which you probably haven't, and you never will again. But uh, it, it uh, um, uh, uh, if you try to find Skype, if you try to find anybody at Skype, it's like they don't exist. There is no customer support number. There is no customer support um, uh, line you can go to. There's no, uh, they, I don't think they even, they used to have like a chat thing where you could chat with somebody, but they don't even have that anymore. You want to piss some people off? Put a number up on the internet and say it's the Skype helpline, and then when people call, just berate them. <laughs> yeah, that's a good idea. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that work out perfect. Yeah, here's a, here's yeah. A, yeah. We here. I come up with that. Well, well, you know what it is? It's also it's Microsoft because Microsoft forces you now to have a Microsoft account in order to use Skype. MSN or oh, Skype? Yeah. Skype. So, you know, it's, yeah. yeah. Well, hey, even, even Adobe is uh, is killing off uh, the standalone version of Lightroom by the end of the year. And uh, they uh, they introduced an update yesterday that allows you to store stuff in the cloud, but now you've got to pay more money for that storage. So if you want one terabyte of photo storage with Adobe uh, Lightroom, uh, it's... Uh, Fourteen ninety-five a month or something for the photographer version. Why and, do you need one terabyte? Uh, well, if you use that, then it spreads uh, whatever pictures you're working on across all your devices. And let's say you want to look at it on your phone or do some editing. Well, that, that's very uh, nice, but you don't have to get a terabyte. Why don't you start out with their lowest plan, and then when you fill that up, go to the next plan. I think it's 20, 20 gigs. Yeah, yeah, and how much is that? It's free. So it'll do that for a while. And then yeah. when you fill that up and you, you feel you've filled that up, then you can go to their next level. But don't buy yeah. one terabyte a month just because you think you might be using it. Yeah, well, I'm not. But uh, I, <clears throat> Hell, I only, I only have three terabytes of porn. 
Right. You know, I mean, oh, but, uh, no, this, this is for your <laughs> store and, and work on your photos in Lightroom, but you can do it on all your devices. And whatever you update on that device updates across all of your devices. Uh, uh, ESO? Well, it's, uh, I think it's a. I mean, I find that, I find that fucking annoying. And I'll tell you why. Uh, you have this thing called Gmail, which when I was trying to find a, a mail system, because I, I went to Fios and they don't have a mail system. Spectrum mm -hmm. did have a mail system and I had to give up my old mm -hmm. address. Uh, and so initially I went and got myself a Gmail account. And yeah. all of a sudden I'm finding that if I take a thing off of one, I lose it on the other. In other words, if I get a message on Gmail and then I delete it, it will delete it on the Gmail site. Get what I'm oh, saying? You know, on the uh, yeah. server site. Yeah, and I'd Not like the option of it to stay on the on the on the Gmail site. You know, uh, or to, or if I get rid of it on the Gmail site, it disappears from my uh, from say my Outlook or whatever. Why do you bother getting rid of anything on Gmail? I don't think I've erased a, an email since because 2000. Because I don't, I don't like to keep emails that I'm not using. What I'm, I'm going to hold on to spam. I, I don't, I, you know, it's there somewhere. In I the mean, ether. I know girlfriend doesn't get rid of anything, and I'm going. Why do you not get rid of everything? You know, you know. But <laughs> I, I just don't like these things where, I, I would prefer that I could buy machine say I want to be part of that cloud, but I don't want to get it unless I ask for it. Yeah. yeah. Well, you wouldn't on the Adobe thing. And you know what? So now you can and now and now you can bore people with your fucking photographs no matter where you are. Well, oh, of course. You know, think about it this way. Let's say uh, you, you're taking photographs and you're downloading to your laptop in the field, and then you do some editing, and then when you go uh, home... I, I can wait till I go home. Well, uh, yeah. you know, for a guy like me, I dive. I might be on a boat for, uh, for, for a week. Well, then, then take all your photos, and when you come home, edit them. I, I, I use my GoPro, and if I want to, I can have every one of my GoPro files go up to the cloud... Because yeah. GoPro has a has a thing where you can do that, mm -hmm. uh, and then you can edit it while you're out there. And but I don't want to edit it out there. I came back tonight. I, I uh, Monday. Uh, I uh, put all my files on the computer, and today I edited them into something which I'll play on the air next week, um, yeah. and bore the living shit out of people. <laughs> you know, uh, ah, huh? Show, huh? Oh, well, there's nothing. Well, there's Board nothing like. Oh, wait a minute. Let me hold. Uh, give you a preview. I'll give you a little preview here, folks. Uh, <laughs> let me see here. Where are we? Uh, we've got to find it. There we go. Video two. Okay. Uh, this is the beginning of it, and to show you how exciting it is, watch this. I'm bored already. See? <laughs> see? She's. Uh, we're going through JFK. Oh, not here. I don't see it. No, yeah. we don't see it. Well, I, I, well, you don't see it because you don't not, have to. <laughs> you don't have to. <laughs> He'll explain it to us. You're That's not going to see. You're not going to see it on guy. Skype. You have to look at it on Facebook Live. Oh, and, oh, and you see oh, the. Oh, and they confiscated her stuff. Bag I've had for twenty some what kind of stuff? years. Toothpaste too large. Two Swiss Army knives and a wine bottle opener. Uh, they took both, all three of those. I, and I lost the. Uh, I lost the. Uh, yeah. yeah. So anyway, that 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 will we'll, we'll have that boring piece of video on next week. Okay. So. Oh, yeah. um, be, because I was going to do it tonight, but I had bubs, so uh, I didn't want to. I didn't want to screw around with that. But sure. uh, um, I, I edited that when I came home, and I would rather sit here and edit it and work on it with my big screen than sitting there with a laptop or a iPhone or a, you mm. know, whatever. I don't need that. Mm hmm. Mm -hmm. Now way you can take it easy, I'll just relax and do it. And by the way, folks, you may notice how wonderfully clear that picture looked and how smooth the picture was. That's because I was using my Karma Grip. I was actually using a Steadicam on that. So mm -hmm. everything, so the camera seems to be floating, which I love. I just love. You know? mm -hmm. But uh, that, 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 next week we'll show you, it's, it's a whole thing with uh, Shelburne Farms and then the Shelburne Museum, which is an amazing, amazing place. Mm. So, yeah, that, but that's next week. S yeah. Something I to look forward to. What, what, Mike? Uh, that boat that you took the picture of, 
Is that just goes around that that bay? No. No. No, it's landlocked. It's on. It's on a. It's, it's a. a it's oh, on the Shelburne Museum, it, it, right? It, yeah, it's on a, on a lawn. Is yeah. where it is. It's not oh, on the water at all. It's just it's, it's not uh, on the water at all. No. Yeah, I don't think it could float. Actually, it's so old. It's probably well, pretty... you know it probably could float. I mean, that boat is still in very good shape, but they restored all the insides and everything, and it's just right. gorgeous. <clears throat> uh, you'll see the video I've of the in, inside of it. it. It's interesting. Yeah. Oh, you've been there. Well, we were talking about that a couple yeah. days ago. That yeah, I'd be, you, you were mentioned when you got back about the Shelburne Museum, and I, I was up there back in 2012. Uh, I spent a couple of days around the the um, Burlington area. I just happened upon the museum. I didn't really even. Uh, they think completely about it. rebuilt a railroad station there, complete yeah. with a train and, and complete with yeah. a, a railway station, and it's wonderful. They have a 50 wow. 0 ranch house. It's all all loaded up with all sorts of 50s era furniture and stuff yeah. and actually the house had been there they just bought it <laughs> and just, just and i didn't i didn't go there. to the circus museum but i think you said you did i, I did yeah yeah That's, it's great yeah. all sorts of interesting uh but anyway we, we, we'll, circus, we'll be showing that so that that's that's one of the reasons to watch it that's a neat place you yeah, know definitely. and to watch some guys uh, uh my friend has this dock okay and the winter's coming, and the lake freezes, and so they have to undo. They have to literally uh, disassemble the dock. It's a, it's made out of aluminum, and it's on wheels in the water and stuff like that. Pull it right up and get. But it out he has of the to water. hire people to come over and disassemble it and put all the pieces on shore. Right? Uh, mm -hmm. These guys show up. It is. I mean, it's freezing. Okay. The water has got to be freezing. It's getting on to winter. It's, it's gonna that's gonna be all frozen over, right? And these guys are in shorts. I mean, I'm all bundled up, and they're in shorts in the water up to their knees, pulling this thing out. And I'm going, boy, they. I hope they're getting paid a lot of money for that. But we have video <laughs> of that as well. Um, Standard summer summer afternoon in, yeah. in in Lake Champlain area, I guess. I have to, for you to look forward to next week. Twenty five minutes of really boring vacation footage. So mm -hmm. you know it's going to be great. What I did on my trip by Alex Bennett. Yeah. <laughs> you know, uh, in San Francisco, uh, down at the Aquatic Center on Fisherman's Wharf, mm -hmm. uh, there are people. I, I forget the name of the club. But they get into the uh, they get into the water and it's freezing. The uh, polar, polar, bears, polar, yeah. polar bear club. Yeah, the polar bear club. And yeah, they I do just that here too. Themselves to be accustomed to the cold water and it doesn't seem to bother them. Maybe that's the same thing that you've got up there. No, it's probably it's just every day in in Vermont. They're yeah. probably getting yeah. paid some nice the money for it. And they're warm. doing it, you know. <laughs> But, well, you know, they could wear a, a wetsuit, uh, you know, <laughs> and and be a little comfortable. Well, right, yeah, you know, uh, no, they're too macho for it, that. It's <laughs> probably just easier this way. And these, I mean, these guys sure. are just well, they're brawny too. They're big, big exactly, big, <laughs> big, big guys. Um, Fdy, they're the dock puller outers, you know. <laughs> By the way, did you see uh, Quentin Tarantino made a statement today about Harvey Weinstein? Uh, if no. you, it's, in, really. it's in the New York Times, and you probably should read it because I really like him more than I used to like him. I mean, I liked him a lot when I met him. Uh, changed my whole opinion of him uh, because he was a very nice guy. But he, you know, he, if anybody owes his career to Harvey Weinstein, it's, it's Quentin Tarantino. Every movie mm -hmm. he ever made, I think, was produced by Weinstein. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, and uh, he mentions in there that, you know, it was kind of like a father-son relationship. I mean, Harvey thought of him as a son and treated him like that. And, and uh, who, was, who, was, uh, who was his girlfriend? Who was Tarantino's girlfriend at one point? Mira Sorvino, who's been mm -hmm. telling stories about how she was accosted by Harvey. And uh, uh, so uh, Tarantino says, I mean, I, says, I have to apologize. I was remiss. I was terrible. He said, I knew this was going on because Mira told me what went on. 
okay? I didn't know there was rape involved, but I did know that these terrible events were going on, and I still stuck with Harvey because he was my, basically he's saying my bread and butter. And he said, if I were more of a decent human being, I would have up and quit, but I didn't. And he said, for that, that's my shame. And I mean, it's really a, one of the greatest mea culpas I've ever read, you mm -hmm. know. Uh, it, there's no, he's not like trying to make excuses, uh, you know, but what he's trying to say is everybody knew, everybody. Mm -hmm. This mm -hmm. was, you know, oh, well, that's, the, the, the answer was always, oh, well, that's Harvey, you know. Ooh. Oh, yeah. Uh, and, and it's just, an, I wondered why Tarantino hadn't said anything, and I think he was waiting. And he said that he, uh, you know, somebody said, do you think this will hurt your career? And he said, I hope not. I want to keep making movies, you know. He said, all I ever wanted to do was make movies, and this guy made it possible for me to make movies. Do you think that this thing that's going on with Weinstein, uh, Weinstein and, and uh, a number of other people right now in Hollywood, uh, eventually it will pass and they'll go back to doing exactly what they did? Uh, and, uh, you know, it's like when there's a gun thing where uh, they shoot up a school and everybody starts screaming, gun control this and, you know, get rid of the guns and, you know, things ha like this can't continue. And then a few months later, it's it's business as usual. Nothing gets done, and uh, you know they're 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 back to diddling whoever they diddle. I don't think so. I mm -hmm. I, I I think it will maybe always, Harvey will be screwed, I, but I, there are I, other people I, that probably you know be able this to isn't Harvey th not slide under the this radar. This isn't like this isn't like pederasty. You know, yeah. it's a different it's a different kind of animal here. Uh, you know, the yeah. fact that Harvey's going to a, a country club. Uh, for perverts, uh, you know, to try and solve his problem. Is, oh, that, that's a PR move. It's a PR move. Somebody yeah. said, you know, it's really where he's going is a country club. It, it was somebody's daughter. It was Feinstein's daughter, uh, Diane Feinstein. Her her, da her daughter mm -hmm. represented him for uh, to, to improve his PR. And it seems as though there was some sort of deal uh, where he promoted her book and uh, a number of other things. So now all of a sudden they're looking into, I think her name is Janice Bloom. I, I'm, not, I'm not quite sure the name, mm -hmm. but uh, it, it just came up today that uh, uh, she had uh, backed him uh, in these things and was aware of what was going on. Uh, the, is anyone else familiar so you're with that? So you're going to blame Diane Feinstein for that? No, just saying. You're trying to, to besmirch Diane, Diane Feinstein by, uh, I, by I osmosis. Yes, I, well, you know, I, I, it just so happens that it was her daughter. Uh, Believe me, there are reasons to besmirch uh, Diane, Diane Feinstein. Feinstein, but that's not one of them. Yeah, you're exactly I right. Find this, uh, well, maybe I was, but, you know, uh, I, I the association is there that it was her daughter that uh, was representing Weinstein. Uh, are you uh, you're looking it up? No, I'm not it's looking Lisa it up. It's Lisa Bloom, and she <laughs> quit when she found <laughs> out <laughs> how bad it was. Wait a okay. minute. How wait a minute. Wait a minute. Hold that? on a second. Lisa Bloom isn't Diane Feinstein's Lisa. daughter. Lisa. It's her stepdaughter. No. It's uh, it, it, she's she, somebody's daughter. It, no, she's what's her name? Yeah. Red uh, Red the uh, the uh, 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 lawyer. Uh, yeah. Yes. Uh, it's, yeah, I didn't think it was Feinstein. You're right. Somebody told me it was Feinstein. No. No. no uh, somebody it, was wrong. Who who mm -hmm. who who's that? Who's the female lawyer who also does all the uh, All Red? Yeah. Pal all, all Red. Allred, Gloria, Gloria Allred. Allred. Yeah. Yes, Lisa Bloom is Glo is Gloria oh, okay. Allred's daughter. Boy, boy, they, boy, have you got Feinstein. that one? Have you got that one Feinstein. wrong? I didn't think it was Feinstein. You're right. Yeah. Well, when, well. when it started to come out, Feinstein, Feinstein had a statement saying, "I'm really upset about this because my daughter had has had de dealings with it." Oh, okay. And I, oh my God. Well, I, that know, might I, be I, my. I uh, there's the, a the Lisa Bloom situation was is that Lisa Bloom was Weinstein's lawyer. Oh, oh and yeah. she she quit. She said, right. "I can't be any part of this." You know, right? And now Question she's representing how, how the women. How soon did she quit? Yeah, uh, did she quit just a little while ago, or did she quit years ago when she? Well, found you know, it's, about, it, about, everybody uh, says it's been going on forever. When it, when, it, when it was coming out, yeah, well, okay. it, it, it's, it's, it's out. the yeah. old thing that everybody knew. You know, yeah. everybody so, knew, and 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 yeah, and, 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 and and what Tarantino was saying is that everybody knew, and shame on all of us.
You know, mm. and shame on all sight. of us. Then well, why didn't he stop him? No, but you should. He he explains that, and you know it wasn't that easy, Mike. You know, it's very Mike. easy for you to sit there, you know, up in Sacramento and not being in the movie industry to say, hey, why didn't they all rat on Weinstein? And the reason they didn't is because he was the most powerful man in Hollywood, okay? And you, you had to yeah. balance you had to balance your morality. You know, you could say, hey, I don't want to do business with this guy, or I don't some want... Some people did. I, I don't want my clients to do business with him because they're women. Uh, uh, but the fact of the matter is that, you know, you, you just didn't get that brave, Mike. It's very easy as a, as a Monday morning quarterback to say, oh, here's what I would have done, you know. I wonder why these people, knowing that this is his proclivity, didn't just bring a bodyguard in or a, or a second in with them to... Uh, well, to, I don't know. You know, you know, you know what uh, Tarantino said he felt guiltiest about? He said... I should have talked to Harvey about this. I should have talked to him about what he was and what he did to Mira, for instance. But mm -hmm. I didn't. You know, he well, says, and that's my shame and I have to live with it. I mean, it's a really good mea culpa. I mean, it's, 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 you, he's not, he's not uh, cutting any corners on it or trying to take any blame off himself as to why he did this. Mm -hmm. But, you know, Harvey was his bread and butter. All those nine <laughs> movies he's made so far were all Harvey Weinstein pictures. Why wouldn't somebody like Paul Servino, uh, the father of Mira Servino, uh, do something about it if he knew? Maybe he you didn't know. know. Yeah, maybe he didn't know. You know, maybe yeah, Mira didn't. Knew. Maybe that, that's the kind I of mean, thing. No. Mira maybe he didn't know that there was an actual connection to her to yeah. his daughter. I mean, he probably he may have known about Harvey, but he may not have known that Harvey had had done that anything to Mira, you know, because you yeah. know, usually want, it's not something you want to really talk about a lot. You yeah. know? Who's that pretty young blonde actress that has like that little bump on her forehead? Uh, uh, she's um, been in a number of movies, you know, that, uh, these blonde movies and so forth. Um, Jennifer Lawrence. Uh, pardon me? Jennifer Lawrence. No, no, no. This is, uh, I think she's older than that. She uh, doesn't have a bump on her head, uh, uh, Scott. Well, how do you know who she is? Because I've never even Je seen any Je of her movies. Jennifer Lawrence is perfect. No, it's not <laughs> Jennifer Lawrence. But uh, <laughs> anyway, this gal, uh, who, a very famous actress, which, of course, I can't remember Well, she name. must not be that famous because we don't know of any actresses with bumps on their heads. <laughs> yeah, she, she, she's Harvey probably gave her that bump. She was in, she was in Legally Blonde and, and those. You're talking uh, about Reese Witherspoon? Yes, Reese that's Witherspoon? Reese Witherspoon. Right. She didn't have a bump on her head. <laughs> Look at her forehead. And uh, so anyway. Only he would see that. She, she said that she was raped uh, by a producer when she was 16. I believe uh, it. I believe it. Could have been him. Been I him. absolutely believe it. I mean, uh, but Reese was. Well, he's not uh, the Reese, only I'll one, tell you about Reese. It? Very interesting. There's a movie theater in San Francisco. I'm trying to remember the name of it now. That used to show like, you know art films and independent films and so on. And she did a movie with uh, Kiefer Sutherland, I'm trying to remember the name of it right now, in which mm -hmm. it's a play on the Little Red Riding Hood thing. And it was a very good movie. And I'm trying to remember, what, oh, Freeway was the name of the picture. Mm -hmm. And she was so into promoting that movie that she came to San Francisco because this theater was gonna play it. In fact, I think the guy turned out distributing the film that she, literally came to San Francisco, she was broke, so she slept in the projection booth at night. You know, I mean, th this, was a, th this was a woman who would do anything it took to become successful. Well, maybe one of those things was, you know. At 16? Sleeping with a producer or two, yeah. Well, I mean, not that she wanted to, but she yeah. didn't want to a, a rock the apple cart either. The Hollywood system. Uh, yeah. And, and what's terrible about this and what's terrible about Harvey Weinstein is these are people with power, and they use that power to get their dick sucked. And I think that that is just abominable, you know? It is. I mean, uh, I, I used to use my charm and good wits and my lovability to get my dick sucked, and that's why I never got my dick sucked. And so, you know, What? <laughs> And your cocaine. <laughs> well, cocaine didn't hurt. You know. <laughs> actually, and actually, if I ever felt there was a woman around me hanging out because I had some drugs or something like that, uh, I would have nothing to do with them. 
I remember people gave you more than you would have well, to buy. Yeah, people gave me much more than I ever had to buy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. But those those, those were the days. Yeah, yeah, yeah. really. <clears throat> Sure. And we still have noses. The first half of my San Francisco stint, folks, I did entirely on cocaine. You know. Yeah. They were good shows, though. And they moved really fast. <laughs> yeah. uh, At least you thought they did. Had a lot of energy. You know. Right. Jeez. Uh, at 7 in the morning, you know, you're like, whoa. <laughs> well, you know what it was? I had a great fear uh, that at 7 in the morning, I wouldn't be awake enough to do a show. Hmm. And so I figure if I did a little pop, this is how I got started with. If I did a little pop, I'd be, you know, I I started actually doing coke because I had a program. I had a general manager at one of my radio stations. I won't say, well, I won't say which one, but don't suspect that it's any particular one because most of the other guys were not this way. But this Mm. guy would, after the show, my show was over, saying, great show, Alex, come on into my office. And he would close, close the door, and then he would lay out some lines of cocaine and say, good show, you know? Well, you, you remember Joe, the sales guy? Uh, what, what was his name, Schwartz? You know, it, it, well, it was endemic there. At what station? Camel. Yeah, well, that, that place was floating on a bedrock of cocaine. Yeah. On a bedrock of rock. <laughs> it, it was i mean we we uh, but, held i uh, remember i remember we had he held one of these listener appreciation parties or something like that and we were all in the bathroom in one single toilet stall five of us doing coke now you know. uh, when i helped you out there you used to pick me up at like four fifteen in the morning yeah uh, yeah to to get there for a 6 a.m show i don't remember any of this but go ahead <laughs> Yeah. Maybe now I'm beginning to realize why I don't remember any of it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, but uh, yeah, no, you grew up early. Yeah, Jeez. no, there was my there was my my cocaine period, and then I went to Miami and I quit. Now, who goes to Miami and quits cocaine? I have mm. no idea. <laughs> you but know, I it's did. scary because you don't know anybody there. Yeah, and, and that's everybody could be a narc. Well, no, also, I don't know anybody there, and so, therefore, I don't know how to score. Yeah, that's true. Okay, so I, I stopped. I stopped. I remember I did my last toot at the Florida border, and that was wow. it. That was the last time. I, I, a couple of years later, on a New Year's, I bought some Coke just to see how I'd like it. And, you know, I, what, I, what I learned about cocaine is you do cocaine the first time you ever do it. It's terrific, right? So then you keep doing it, keep doing it, keep doing it, and it never gets terrific like it once was. Now you're taking it just so you won't Jones for not having it, right? Right. Mm-hmm. Uh, and so finally I, I quit, and I quit for about two years, and it's a New Year's Eve, and I say to my girlfriend, hey, why don't we, why don't we buy some, why don't we get some Coke, you know? I haven't done Coke in like two years, and I'll bet it'll be really good because it'll be like the first time I ever did it because I haven't done it in two years. And the first time you do it, after quitting it after two years, you pick up right where you left off. It isn't the same thrill you had the first time you ever tried it. You're just picking up same. where you left off. And I said, well, this is no fun. And I stopped it completely. You know, Was it the same with pot? I, I know that you know, the first time I tried it, I was maybe 16. And uh, that first time, I didn't even know I was high. But the second time... Yeah. Uh, it, I, I was, and then from then on, it was nothing. Just, just like the same uh, with the coke. Well, no, I uh, uh, no pot. I always found was different in many times. In, in you know, it depended on the pot. I mean, you could not smoke the same. Like, let's say you bought a pound of some weed, okay? Yeah. And now you had to get through that pound. By the time you got to the end of the pound, you were so sick of this pot. And this pot just didn't give you the buzz it once did. But if you suddenly went to another brand or another, you know, species, species, yeah. all of a sudden that one was really good, you know. Now the reason I don't do pot anymore is I think it's just too strong, or maybe I'm yeah. just too old. I don't know, but I, I find it's just too strong. Girlfriend loves her pot, you know. Yeah, it might be. Uh, you know, she you know. she smokes pot and then she beats me up. She hits me, and uh, I'm a battered Elder husband. Abuse. Elder abuse. Yeah, I bet you enjoy Elder it too. Yeah. <laughs> I told these friends on vacation. I said, "Yeah, she does her drugs, and then she beats me." You know, 
you know. Well, has the attitude improved? Uh, oh, I'm very good. I'm do all my chores. And, well, you know, usually the beatings stop once the attitude improves. You know, I mean, I I I I have to do things in this house just the way she wants them. The bed has to be made in exact way, and she, you know, I feel sorry. We have a woman who comes in and cleans every two weeks, and she knows that she has to make the bed just correctly. Well, you were in the Navy, so you and, know how well, to do the hospital corners well, and. Uh, I, it, I, I, I don't. No, I, I had the sloppiest bed in the Navy. I'm sorry. I just wasn't good at it. took water off of it? <laughs> no, I was, I was a terrible sailor. I was, a, I was on a boat a ship for about three months, and then thank God I got pressed into service by the Armed Forces Radio and Television Service, and I went to Hollywood. Yeah. yeah. And never yeah. had to wear that. Only once a year did I have to wear the Donald Duck suit. Yeah. You know? uh, and that was on Armed Forces Day. So we would all show up, and it was like, you know what it was? It, it, it All of a sudden, all the people you had never seen all year long wearing a uniform were now wearing a uniform. And so now you well, can tell who was, a, who was a master sergeant and who was a petty officer. I mean, we had every branch of the ser service there. But so it, was kinda like, it was kind of like it was kind of like after a cosplay is what it was. It was like, you know, you were not after, a, excuse bottoms. me, excuse me, Armed Forces Radio and uh, what do we call it? Armed Forces Radio and Television. AFRTS, right? AFRTS, yeah. We used to, right. AFARTS, we Service. used to call it. Yeah, yeah AFARTS. <laughs> but, you know, think about it. You were fashion forward. You were wearing bell bottoms before, uh, the, you know, everybody well, was. Only for a short time. I mean, once a year, I'd have to wear that uniform and I might have gained some weight. And that was a real problem. And I, <laughs> and I like, see, there were two kinds of, of, of pants in the Navy. They had ones with a zipper up the front, and then there were ones with the 13 buttons. Now, I like the ones with the 13 buttons because they, look, they yeah. look really cool, you know. Yeah. And and uh, but they it, when you have to take a pee, it takes a while because <laughs> there were thirteen buttons for all the thirteen colonies. Now with thirteen oh. buttons, how do you equally distribute them? Well, I have no idea, but uh, they were there, and I there were thirteen buttons supposedly, and I, I would just boom 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 boom, and then I pull my dick out, you know, and then boom 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 boom, but. I didn't want the zipper because it just it just looks dorky. The zipper, you know. Yeah. So. Well, if you uh, were unable to un undo the buttons before, you know, you had to take a monster piss or something. Yeah. You could always say I pissed on the colonies. That's right. That's right. <laughs> well, also you had yeah you had uh, I you had uh, what was it three different outfits. You had one which were your dress blues, which had all the mm -hmm. piping on the. On the bib yeah, in the back and all fancy, of that, yeah, yeah, and and that one you just never used. You know, you put that over in the corner, and every now and then, if it looked like the piping was getting dirty, you had to clean it and make sure it was spick and span. And a pair mm. of shoes that were shined to a mighty glow. Okay, and you <laughs> learn how to do that by uh, taking the shoe polish. I'm trying to remember how we did it exactly. Water a and water shine, and water right? and water. But you also set the stuff on fire. You st set the uh, uh, shoe shine stuff on fire, and then you put it out, and then you use that with the wet rag, and then you just shined and shined and shined and shined and shined. I mean, it took hours to get it up to the. Some people had to see, so you could actually see your face in their shoes. Wow. You know? How did you clean your, you know, that stuff that you were saying? The piping? How did you clean that? Piping. Um, uh, that, that was, how did we do that? I think that was just soap and water. Uh, you did it with a toothbrush, though. Oh, man. It went along, yeah. Yeah, yeah. That's, that took you a long time, though, to do that, right? Uh, it, 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 yeah, it took a, it took a bit of bit of time. Yeah. Nothing else to do on a ship. Yeah, uh, yeah, but, you know, so, uh, but then you had that. So that was, you never used that, you, you know, un, unless there was some, like you were had to do it because there was a what what's the, what's the term special uh, they they, the you know, they were they were reviewing they were reviewing the troops and you had to be yeah. spick and span then you had the non-piping version of the blue outfit okay which is just it you know had all this stuff but it didn't have all the all the decoration on it okay uh, and it was just a a navy blue flannel outfit tunic and and pants and then you had the whites 
that was that uh, oh wait a minute they're four then you had the whites and the whites you used if you hit the tropics <laughs> mm. you know and finally there were the dungarees and the blue denim shirt and that was if you were working on something were the whites wool like the uh, blues huh yeah the were whites the no the whites were 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 i think they were like denim or some kind oh. of linen or whatever they were yeah they were cloth you know so that so you had a lot you know yeah you, you, that your duffel bag was pretty well filled if you you know i i had a duck, duffel bag with all these outfits in them and i kept them in the corner of my apartment did you have a like a coat heavy coat a pea coat oh i had a pea coat, coat. yes i had a pea coat okay. and i didn't keep it i lost it or something but man they were great. Those things would last you for the rest of your life. Mm -hmm. You know. Uh, I yeah. have okay. one here belonged to somebody. Somebody gave it to me. I like used it during the winter time. Those things are oh, they're nice great. Water. They're great. They're terrific. And that's all. That's what I learned in the Navy, folks. And that's I'm a Vietnam vet, you know. So, you go. I mean, thank I, you for your service. Yeah, well, no, I'm a Vietnam vet. Technically, I'm a yeah. Vietnam vet. Yeah. I uh, qualify for any benefits Vietnam vets may get. I still have um, Marjorie sent away to the VA and stuff. I, I've got all the stuff now so that if I want a VA loan for a house, I can get it. Um, yeah, you could be buried in Arlington then, Alex. Well, no, I can't, you can't, I can't get buried in Arlington. Oh, and that would, be, that, would be, that would be bad taste. If you're burying you can, me in you Arlington. Can, you can look oh, up. Uh, uh, oh, by the way, you do get a free burial as well. But uh, uh, you can look up and see if you if you would have been issued any medals. And even if you didn't receive them, they'll send them to you uh, if uh, if they were issued, like a Vietnam service medal and uh, things like that. Yeah. But I, uh, you know, I because I left uh, uh, right after the Vietnam War broke out. So I was in that little cusp where I, I'm a Vietnam vet. So so that's when they were sending the advisors to the 200 uh, advisors there or something? No, uh, no, no, uh, no. Oh, no, no. By that, time, by that time, we were sending a lot of people over there. Yeah. We were saying, you're thinking about the Over 1,500, the 1,500 or 15,000, so, uh, 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 what do you call it, uh, advisors oh, that uh, that uh, kennedy sent over mm -hmm. yeah. this uh, was later yeah. this was later mm -hmm. this was, was i mean i was mustered out after the gulf of ton ken incident and i told right. you guys i think the other night yeah that I, that I, advisors that, uh eisenhower that i eisenhower. that i knew guys you know who who were mustered out with me who had been in the gulf of ton ken when that incident happened they were on because the, I saw they had USS Maddox because you had the name of your ship on your right. on your tunic, uh, oh, and please. the Sea Turner Joy. I'll never forget those two names. <laughs> yeah, it's a weird name. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah, yeah, like Sojourner Truth or something. Sea Turner Joy. Well, Sea Turner Joy must be a guy's name because you see, uh, uh, th those were uh, destroyers. And oh, destroyer C as in the letters. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah, okay. yeah. yeah. No, destroyer, destroyers. Like are a named, seahorse. Yeah. Destroyers are named after people. Sure. Uh, uh, well, the uh, McCain. <laughs> yeah. Was out yeah. in Korea. Yeah. yeah. That's a, either a, a, that's a destroyer, I think, or a I think it was a destroyer. cruiser or something like and, that. And, and <laughs> do, no, cruisers are named after cities. I was on the USS okay. Topeka. Okay, so and then the and then and, the, and the, the uh, aircraft carriers, the big, the big guys, yeah. Aircraft carriers are named after what? Presidents. Nope. Nope. States. Nope. Lots of things. Well, the Intrepid is an aircraft carrier. Uh, is different. it an aircraft carrier? Enterprise and the Enterprise and the F and the Intrepid are aircraft carriers. I don't. I but they are frozen. frozen. Wait a minute, because I think the uh, aircraft carriers were named after battles. I'm not frozen. There's like after the, battles? The, after no. battles. There's, there's an Eisenhower and Abraham oh. Lincoln, all oh. kinds of oh. things. They're they're named, they're, maybe they're named after presidents. Hopefully well, the battleships are all states, right? The Iowa and the Missouri. The, yes. Nevada. Ooh. Right. Rhode Island, stuff like that. And there, I used to know what they named construction ships. There were things called construction ships. Mm. And I, uh, no, but I can't rem remember what they called the construction ships, but they were named after something. But they, all you could always tell there, what kind of ship it was. There's a book called the Jane's... Uh, Jane's, Jane's uh, 
Book of Books. No, Jane's uh, Book of Ships. Oh. Yes. Oh, yeah, you can look it up. Some probably online, too. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Everything but, else is. <laughs> yeah. But I... Uh, well, wait, hold on a second. Let me... Uh, uh, I'm, 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 I'm wondering if Let Mike look here doesn't here. have enough power and... Uh, ship naming. Yeah, because... Uh, ship... Uh, well, the but, smaller boats, like uh, PT boats, Alex is, named with the number, right? Yeah, they weren't yeah. like Seven 10, no, PT-109. Uh, PTs were just numbered, yeah. Yeah, numbers, Seven right. Uh, okay, uh, okay, okay. United States of, uh, Ship Naming destroyers. Conventions. Okay, here we go. Battleships mm -hmm. were named for states except for the mm -hmm. USS Kearsarge. Okay? Oh, yeah. I forgot about that one. All right. Battle cruisers, boy, do we have battle yeah, cruisers? Big guy. Uh, under the 1916 program were to receive the names of battles for, or famous ships. When canceled under the Washington Naval Treaty, two were converted to aircraft carriers and became, and this became the standard for them, except for the USS Franklin D. Roosevelt. Right. Uh, a lo let's see here. Large cruisers under the 1940 program were named after United States territories. But cruisers, hmm. both light and heavy, were named for cities. I was right about that one. Okay, there you go. Right. What about frigates? Now they're under numbers, right? Uh, there is. We don't. I, I don't think I, you don't have frigates. And oh, here's a frigate. Formerly oh, ocean it. escorts were named for naval heroes. Okay. Oh. Okay. John Paul Jones or something like destroyers that. Destroyers and destroyer escorts <laughs> were named <laughs> for <laughs> Navy, Marine Corps, and Coast Guard heroes. Okay. Okay. Yeah, my dad was on a couple of uh, a couple of uh, a destroyer escort and a couple of destroyers, the Sumner, the Walk, a couple of, and those are all names of of you know naval guys. DLs. I mean, the destroyer Sumner, destroyer leaders destroyer leaders were likewise named after naval heroes. These were reclassified as cruisers or destroyers in 1975. Frigates, I mm -hmm. told you what that was. Submarines, oh, here we go, are given oh, either go. a class letter and number, as in S-class submarines, or the names of fish and marine mammals. And we have the skipjack was one of those submarines, and the, you know, yeah. a couple other. Oilers were named for rivers Tuna. with Native American names. Mm. Uh, fast combat support ships were named after U.S. cities. Ammunition ships were named after volcanoes. <laughs> really? Now, I, I'm, I'm going to be docking on a <clears throat> landing docking ship called the Spiegel Grove. A landing docking ship uh, is abbreviated LSD. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. uh, and um, They're named after, after drug uh, creators. Yeah. <laughs> right, but it's this one's called the Spiegel Grove, and uh, uh, but it's 525 feet long. Mines, minesweepers were named for birds, or after positive <laughs> traits such as the admirable and the dexterous. Ah. Oh, there we go. Hospital <laughs> ships were given names related to their functions, such as comfort and mercy. We mm -hmm. got the hope. Uh, sure, the hope. Yeah, all of that. Feel, yeah. Fleet tugs and harbor tugs were named after Jeez. American Indian tribes. Okay. And the first oh, okay. 41 nuclear ballistic missile submarines called Boomers were named after historical statesmen and, consider, and considered great Americans. So, so there'll never be one. The there, ben there'll never be one named the Trump. You can be sure of right. that. Right. Uh, but well, I know there was a bad. Ben, ben Franklin was a submarine, and it may still be. Yeah, and he yeah. was a historical figure. It's probably yeah. a Paul Revere somewhere too. Yeah, yeah, probably. Uh, yep. I wonder if there's a Robert E. Lee. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> they'll change the name. Yeah, yeah. Right? yeah. They'll rewrite history. Yeah, no, but anyway, so that's that's how they're that's how they're named. And I just managed to waste ten minutes doing that, which is good because it gets you didn't closer to the end. Of the yes, yes, they I did. did. Yes, I did. Yeah. Uh, they were uh, named after. Oh, oh God! Now I got to go. Right one sorry. of them was named after Roosevelt, and the other ones were named after uh, other. Yeah. Uh, they, not, they, well, uh, uh, oh, okay. So no, doesn't was, George doesn't Earth George H W Bush have an aircraft oh, carrier oh, oh, named after one? I think H W one of them has an aircraft carrier. Submarines, yeah. oils. Wait, maybe, maybe I didn't. Maybe I didn't say. Oh, battleships. It that were converted to yeah. aircraft carriers or something, but. Well, some of the early ones, uh, yeah. Name one, the Gerald yeah. Ford. 
Yeah, that's what I'm thinking. There are some presidents that have been yeah. named for kind of like, random, uh, I think. aircraft I carriers. Know. Oh, here we go. Here, uh, yeah, battle some cruisers. Too, yeah. When canceled, uh, my, my treaty two battle uh, two were converted to aircraft carriers, and this mm. name this became the standard for them, with the exception mm. of the U.S. Uh, as Franklin and the uh, D. Roosevelt and the USS Wright and the USS Forrestal. Uh, but this, oh, right. uh, they were uh, names of battles. The Kitty Hawk, which is uh, not mm -hmm. a, not a battle, uh, but the so rest of them were battles. Battle? Huh? Is the Enterprise a uh, aircraft carrier? I have no well, idea. Well, it was, but it was a long you time ago. Sure. Yes. And and was and the Intrepid, which is a museum here? You know, the old Intrepid is on the 45th Street. Yeah, on the river. Parked in, remember, it was in the city a lot. Remember these? There's, there's an the aircraft uh, carrier uh, that's parked in Alameda, California. Mm -hmm. Uh, I can't remember uh, the name of Was it. Was that the Enterprise? Uh, maybe well, that's it. Uh, maybe that that's might it. Be. Yeah. That might be. Yeah. It isn't the Hope. It, that's in... Uh, it's Alameda, isn't it? Or Oakland? No, I thought, I thought the Hope was at the... Uh, what's it called? Where they stored the ships at. Oh, the Mothball Fleet? No. Yeah. Uh, sure, no. No, no. This how they have tours of this one. Uh, I, I went on a tour of it, but I can't remember the name of it anymore. Uh, is it the Enterprise or the... Uh, uh, I think it is the Enterprise. Well, yeah. anyway, anyway. Mm. Those are the naming there, conventions. There okay. we go. <laughs> the Missouri, I've been on that one up in, when it was up in Washington. Yeah. That was a big ship. Oh, so, uh, 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 aircraft carriers are... Inc they're cities is what mm -hmm. they are. I mean, they're gigantic. The current ones especially, yeah. Yeah. Uh, Even the old one over here on the on, on the Hudson River. Well, he, 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 that's pretty he, big. Here's what a stupid kid I was. So I'm, you know, I'm. I, to begin with, I write the Armed Forces Radio and Television Service and tell them I'm a I'm a broadcaster, I'm an announcer, and I would love to come to work for them. And then I don't hear anything from them. And then I so then I I'm told, well, I'm on Treasure Island. You've got to be assigned to a ship, and you're being assigned to the U.S. What would you like? And I said, well, I don't know. What is there? And they said, well, there are destroyers and there are cruisers, you know. And they named a few others. And I thought for a moment, I went, well, I don't want to be on a destroyer because that goes around destroying stuff, right? <laughs> right. Cruising but, sounds but, but like But a fun. cruiser, that sounds like you set out on the deck every day with like a, uh, a sunscreen right. thing and, you know. Pina colada. <laughs> a pina colada. And, uh, you know, they, they have Wait, a shuffleboard. At noon, they have right. a buffet, you know, and then you play uh, – <laughs> The uh, you know <coughs> shovelboard shovelboard on the deck you know because sure. it's a cruiser right and plus right. a cruiser has got to be a tiny little ship because it has to cruise so it has to zip around right <laughs> so now yeah. I show up at the dock and I'm looking at all these small ships and I'm going which one of these is the Topinka because they're all small ships right. and I said to somebody which one of these is the Topeka? and they said. Oh, that's not the Topeka. That's the Topeka. And they showed me the cruiser, and here's this giant fucking ba boat. And, and I'm going, that, Surprise! That, that's what a cruiser is? And they said, sure is. And I wound up uh, being uh, on the USS Topeka, where I conned my way through my three months there. Uh, they, uh, they had somebody leave their public relations office, and I said, hey, I can do PR. Sure. So, here's what they did. So they stuck me down in this little office, and it was the PR office. And what PR, all the PR office really did, we, it wasn't like, you know, we thought of publicity stunts for the ship or anything like that. It's just that we would write letters home to parents and tell them, your son's doing very well in the Navy, and we're so proud to have him. And so I, all day long, I'm, I'm typing these fucking letters, and I can't even type. I'm hunting and pecking these letters. It's taking me about. I do about one letter a day because you know I, I kept making so many mistakes. And but whatever, nobody ever checked in on me. And because the officer in charge of the public relations office was no longer on the ship, they had not assigned anybody to it. So I was in this place all by myself. That's nice. Mm -hmm. So one day I get, I don't know, I'm using a, a screwdriver or something, and I get this big, huge, giant um, sore on my hand from using, you know, the, the, the thing too right. much. So I went to the, the, to the uh, hospital, whatever they call it, 
infirmary. Yeah. The infirmary. Because uh, yeah. I, I, all the time I was on the ship, I used to go, I'm going to go upstairs. Uh, do you mean topside? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to go downstairs. And you mean below? You know, mm. I, I never could get that nomenclature down. Anyway, I go and I, uh, and every, and, and, and they said, well, uh, it'll heal. Uh, just put a bandage on it. And here, have some codeine. And they give me a bottle of codeine cough syrup. So every time, I'm a hypochondriac. So every two days, I'm over in the infirmary saying I got something, a cold or this or that. They give me another <laughs> bottle of uh, codeine. So now I've got like 20 bottles, I swear to you, 20 bottles of codeine lined up on the shelf in this, uh, in the, in this public information office. And I'm swilling this shit all day long, <laughs> getting yeah. high as a kite. And uh, I don't think any of those parents got a letter from me. I don't think I ever finished a whole letter. But all of a sudden, one day, uh, uh, somebody comes to me, a, an officer or something, and says, who do you know at the Defense Department? And I said, nobody. And they said, well, there's a request from the Defense Department that you be transferred to the Armed Forces Radio and Television Service in Hollywood. And apparently they got my letter, and apparently they were considering me, and apparently they went through the Navy to find out where the hell I was, and they, <laughs> they requested me from the Department of Defense, and when the Department of Defense said, give them up to them, they had to do it. Oh, and yeah. Th and that's how I wound up at the Armed Forces Radio and Television. The luckiest thing that ever happened to me. And they never ran out of codeine again. Uh, they never ran out of codeine again, but... but the, you I'm sure the next guy who took over the public it. information <laughs> office, or the PIO, as they called it, public information office, probably was had a good supply for himself. So, you know, it was that was nice. So then I went to Hollywood, and I had to live in a disheveled old apartment because uh, they would only pay me. They, they paid me money to live off base, but that yeah. wasn't a lot of money. So you couldn't get the world's greatest apartment for it, so... Well, yeah. in those years, apartments weren't anywhere near as expensive. Well, no, as, but, uh, but but still, I wasn't getting near as much money as I would get for that not near as expensive, okay? Yeah. So I had to pay a little bit out of my pocket. My parents kind of sent me some money so I could live in a, in a, in a halfway decent place, you know. And, uh, you couldn't live on base, right? Uh, there, 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 was sure no there was no base. There, there was no base. No. No. Huh. I mean, technically, Armed Forces Radio and Television Service at 9, was it 916 McCadden Avenue? Do I have the address I right? Uh, in Hollywood? It's right uh, on the other side of us was where they used to do Burns and Allen. It was the uh, uh, something service studios. I'm trying to remember the name of it. And later it became, Cop studio, it became right? Coppola's studio. Mm -hmm. But but, uh, but but we were on we were on the next street over and uh be, by virtue of the fact it was Armed Forces Radio and Television Service, that in and of itself was a base, technically. Yeah. You know, it's just that there were no living quarters there, and uh, and I had to have I had to have the Secret Service uh, clearance because they had a, a code bunker in the middle of the place. You know, mm -hmm. and people in there had to have crypto top secret. But I had, so, I, and what, they, and what, I didn't get my top secret till the till the week I was mustered out. So and they didn't even, and they clearance? didn't even find out. I had, a, I had my cousin, my cousin and her husband were communists, but they never found that out, <laughs> and, and they never cleared me till the yeah. last day. I practically the last day I was there. You know, I was just working on temporary clearance. So yeah. you know, so I managed to give away all of America's deep dark broadcasting secrets. So. Oh, of course. And the uh, Rosenbergs, <laughs> huh? Yeah. You went the Rosenbergs. Yeah, yeah. So you know, that was my time in in the Navy. It it was it was interesting. You know, it was it was uh, Ooh, strange. So. And every now and then I'd go, <laughs> you know, it, I feel so shameful because here I am in Hollywood. I'm I'm stationed in Hollywood. I'm not stationed in Guam. I'm not stationed even in Hawaii. I'm stationed in Hollywood. I'm I'm a few blocks from Hollywood and Vine. You don't get more Hollywood than that. And yet I would go over every now and then so I could get some free food and some free sodas and stuff like that to the USO. <laughs> you know? Because I could. Donuts, right? Huh? 
Who you qualify? Three donuts. donuts and somebody re- putting their arm around us saying, so where are you from, son? And I say, oh, <laughs> down the block. <laughs> yeah. Now, did you ever go to the USO lounge at the airport? No, yeah. no. Uh, but there was one. Uh, where was there one? Uh, I saw one in uh, in Burlington. There really? was a, I think there was a USO lounge. Yeah, yeah. And I'm going. Geez, you know. Uh, yeah, could have gone in for donuts and coffee. Yeah, yeah. But anyway, so I can I can still get it. I I still got to be a loan. And I can get a, there's a bunch of stuff I can get. I, I can get I could get actually probably a stipend from the Navy if I if my wife wasn't working. If well, what if, about the college? Uh, don't you get a uh, free uh, college uh, at, in the years that you were in? Yeah, probably. That'd be that'd be really nice. Uh, however, will I live long enough to graduate? Is the question. Yeah. You know. <laughs> you know, there's always these stories of these 95 year old ladies that just get their uh, degree, and you know they really. You know, so it. there's the operating term. They're all ladies. Yeah, well, they're, they're the only ones that live that you long. You know, old guys. I'm telling you, you don't, you know, you don't see as many old guys yeah, when you go back uh, to school. And they say, and so and so is the oldest person in the world, and it's a woman. Do you ever you think know? about going to school for broadcasting? I, I've <laughs> thought about that. You know. <laughs> Um, what, 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 I, what I want to do just for the hell of it. Yeah, I, I was thinking of going, what was I thinking of doing? I was thinking of taking like a course in broadcasting or something at a college and just acing it. Yeah. <laughs> you know? Well, the, cl- the classic place around here back, especially back in the late 70s, whenever my one little radio thing, mm-hmm. uh, the guy that worked with me up in New Hampshire was from the, was a graduate of the Connecticut School of Broadcasting. They used to advertise on like WNEW and some of the, 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 the rock stations. You, too, can be an announcer, whatever, the Connecticut School of Broadcasting. I, According to the guy that I knew that was working with me at this little station up in the middle of nowhere, New Hampshire, yeah. he said, it was such a ripoff. I mean, just, you know, all those schools, uh, they're, they're finding that a lot of them are closing because they promise you the ability to get a job. You know, they got, they have these ones for phlebotomists and medical assistants, but no, there's no jobs. Well, I'll tell you something. I'm I got to tell you something. I, I got to tell you something very, very interesting. When I was younger, I went out with a woman, and I said, "So what? Are, what are you doing?" And we started. We started seeing each other on a regular basis. And I asked her what she did, and she said, "Oh well, I'm a computer coder." And now, in those days, there were these schools you went to to learn to be a computer coder, mm-hmm. and so people who really had nothing going for them in life went to these computer coding schools, and she happened to be a computer coder. Well, as the years went on, these are the people who became the programmers. And these were the people who started knowing all the different code to write programs, and all of a sudden, they had a profession that was making them $100,000 a year. And these were, the, these were the dummies who had nothing else to do with their lives, so they went to computer computer you, you remember this don't you john they went to oh, computer yeah. schools well, a, there yeah. were some local computers little computer schools that advertised as well yeah. on radio and television for you know in in the new york area you know and uh, get into the exciting new world of computing you know yeah and this that was like going to the kinetic school of broadcasting sure in, in the 70s i dated a girl from mountain view and what she used to do was on these big cards she would take uh like pinstriping tape and she would make uh these uh, uh Put, put it on these cards, and then they would make chips. They would photograph this and <laughs> reduce the size to make uh, these silicon chips. Oh, yeah, I know. But That's what they would circuitry do. Circuitry yeah. was what she would uh, yeah. They'd create the circuit in large size, and they just, right. you know, they just bring it down. Oh, yeah, definitely. Yeah. Well, my brother-in-law is uh, retired now, was uh, was a programmer for, and he, he, he was doing it. I mean, he wasn't really sure what he wanted to do when he got out of college. He worked for a while at the... Um, uh, he was uh, what was the at the peace? He was a Peace Corps volunteer. Was uh-huh. teaching at one point. This is about 1968 or something. He's about four years older than me. He he was he was teaching auto mechanics in Jamaica wow. to wow. Jamaicans. By the way, I have I have right, also right now a, a, a scuba guy, so he loved being there. This discussion and, must be boring because we're down to the lowest amount of people I've ever had watching uh-oh. us on Facebook Live. 
How about that Donald Trump? Damn it, we got it. No, no. <laughs> get people back up. Yeah. yeah. Well, for yeah. all you Screw people, him. for all you people who signed out, you didn't see the naked woman on tonight's show. Oh. You know, and and. Uh, Exactly. Uh, yeah, uh, no, I I really I just uh, I just looked over. And there. I don't have pants on, so you know. <laughs> uh, uh, there are only like four people watching or something, oh, and yeah. I'm going, what What the hell is that all about? You know, one night I say that I'm not going to ever do it again on Facebook. Uh, face my Facebook page. I'm going to move it over to Gabnet Live. Uh, you know, to Everybody Facebook in, Gabnet Live. <laughs> And everybody goes crazy, so I go, okay, I don't want to disappoint these people, even though they're morons and don't know that all you have to do is go facebook.com forward slash gabnet live. Too right? hard. Too hard. Too hard. In spite of the fact I also had a link that all you had to do was click on it, you know. Exactly. Uh, it's a lot of work. So I went back last night, and everybody was so appreciative I had, like, uh, the most people we've had watching uh, live in, in, in a long time. And then all of a sudden, back tonight, we're back to the apathy that once existed here, you know. So I don't know why I keep doing this. It's absolute insanity because that's the definition of insanity, doing the same thing over and over and over again with the same result. Now, I went to your Facebook for a different page. result. Yeah. I went to your Facebook page to view mm -hmm. the, the thing on Facebook. Mm -hmm. uh, is, is that what you normally do, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, so so I have no idea, you know. Uh, but uh, 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 you know, this uh, this safari has been working pretty good. Now we're up to six people. Oh, good! Thank you so much hey. to two extra people that just joined us. Over on the audio side, we're doing pretty well tonight. But you know, but anyway, you know. So uh, it, it, uh, this has been more fun than talking about what a prick Trump is, you know. <laughs> And, well, and how, uh, just, just what he is. He's got nine minutes. Uh, you know, didn't his, Kelly come out today and... Uh, uh, Fuck uh, Kelly. Great. Fuck Kelly. He came out to save his job. Yeah, what does he want to do? You know, come on, what did he do after I, he was I, through? Did he I, go I, back and suck Trump's dick? He could have said nothing. What? Uh, and, I, and, and that would have been fine, too. But he, he didn't. You know, he said uh, that. Uh, Listen, if the mother of the, if the wife of this soldier was upset by what Trump said, then whatever Trump said was wrong. I, well, I think that she took it out of. Uh, no, the, she took it exactly he as he said it. I think Trump expresses himself. That's in like a very telling somebody when their dog died that, you, that you, you know. Well, the, I, I, I just think uh, maybe Trump's thought process on how he expresses his yeah, uh, feelings, uh, thoughts, and emotions. Well, well, his thoughts and emotions in that case was like a song that I recorded once with Pat Sky when I produced an album for him. And it went something like this. Our baby died last night. He died for just to spite us of spinal meningitis. Was a lousy baby anyway. Now that is the same sentiment. The Trump did with this woman. Now, he knew what he was getting him himself shotgun, into. Uh, you know, if, if you would have read, hey, mentioned the word shotgun, that would have been a country western tune. Yeah. Hey, Phil, did you hear what Trump said today? For an Irish drink. He says that he's helping the Puerto Rican people. He says he gave himself a 10. 10 what? 10 uh, enemas up his ass? I, I would. I thought he's. he's oh, he needs to a bunch of there. shit. He's doing a fucking bunch of bullshit. <laughs> oh, really? That's a bunch of bullshit. What kind of bullshit? Okay, why is he doing more for the people? Well, 90% of the island doesn't have electricity, but that's better than a week ago. Yeah, because 85% uh, of the island, uh, or 95% of the we island go. didn't have electricity before the hurricane. So this is an improvement. Uh -huh, uh -huh. <laughs> Another racist Spanish Puerto Rican joke. Okay. Uh, by association. Yeah. It was Diane Feinstein. Oh, bullshit. <laughs> Her daughter. When he went to Houston, he was on his best behavior. Those are his people. They vote for him. He doesn't give a shit about Puerto Rico. He doesn't yeah. give a shit about it. I'm sure, I'm sure he was surprised when he found out that they were actually citizens. That's what ironic. Yeah, I was watching something on the news. Uh, the, uh, we're back down to four to people, by the way. What? North Korea went to North Korea. This one reporter he asked about Trump. He said Trump is nuts. 
<laughs> Straight out nuts. Yeah, I froze up again. Yeah, it's and uh, Trump's supposed to go to South Korea sometime next week or yeah. So he he, he's not coming to California to look at all the birds. Yeah, well, you know, we're they, almost running out of time here, but uh, you know, I I, I, I I I said it before, and I'll I'll say it again that uh, he um, uh, that I think Kim Jong Un is saner than anybody gives him credit for because he's playing this game really well. You know. He just he just threatened us with yeah, uh, I know I know, what, I know. Steam something or other yeah 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 if what it, else is it, true? it because he's because the dragon. because we're gonna they're gonna be holding uh, some kind of weapons thing when Trump comes in uh, but <coughs> with Korea and South Korea and the American Navy or whatever and, they're doing uh, practice operations or something yeah yeah and he says that uh, he's gonna he, when as soon as he gets a nuclear device he's gonna use it on like Washington or something like that you know he is very smart he knows what he knows is that at some point uh, they're gonna bring him to the negotiating table but he wants to come armed to the teeth okay so that he can get the best possible deal He's not. He's not going to send a device anywhere, but he wants to have it, so he has a bargaining chip, and that's yeah, not stupid. And, and also, that's not also, stupid. You know, he also, he says, if the U.S. wants to bargain chip with our atomic weapons, same with the U.S. We'll bargain with that same way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you know, uh, and like a friend of mine in South Korea says, every time, oh. What's his name up north says start, start stopping his feet. We just think, well, there he goes again. Now what? Yeah. But I How mean much uh, you bet Kim Jong un isn't alive in six months to a year. Oh, I'll bet is he'll be alive in six months to a year. Yeah. Yeah. Uh Absolutely. you know, because that would be the answer to the uh to the issue is uh Kim Jong un all of a sudden is dead and uh oh, the, the oh, new oh, leader Oh, you think is, that would solve the problem? That's why I don't that, that, know. Then, his, then his sister takes over because his sister was just appointed to the big council, and she's probably smarter yeah, than him. Yeah, and I, like I don't want uh, Trump to die because uh, I don't know how bad shit Kim, crazy pence will get. At least I know what I've got with Trump. At least I know I've got bad shit crazy. <laughs> yep. Forget or or wait a minute, wait a minute. Let's because Brian has hardly talked tonight, Brian. Mm. What I called him batshit crazy. What would you call Trump? As I've called him before, scrotus. Scrotus, <laughs> scrotus the scrotus. Yeah, oh. I could just call him a dipshit. Well, it, it, that dipshit is going to probably appoint four uh, Supreme Court what? justices uh, before wait. the end of his term. Oh, Phil, wait, 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 Phil. What do you think about the new prototype Jesus. wall with waste of time and money? Uh, as long as they keep doing the time and money, there's a time and money wasted. So, types. and they don't waste you stuff on money? thousand dollar toilet seats, seven hundred and fifty dollar hammers, uh, you know, uh, food stamps, and all sorts of other things to waste money on. So, w when haven't we done that? No, we've always done that. Uh, and let's for a moment. And I've only got a moment. I've got perhaps 20 seconds to say this. You want to talk about waste. How about our, our, our president and the waste in security that we are spending over and above That's what true. we normally would spend for anybody else? That puts people to work, and they're and they're doing well, they're it, it, yes. Anyway. But it, it, at two hundred thousand dollars a day here in New I York think, City, yeah. I uh, to protect Trump Tower. I think we could be getting a better deal for our money, you know? That's true. Well, anyway. Hey, that's it for tonight. Uh, thanks for nobody listening. And, uh... <laughs> They'll listen later. They'll listen later, yeah. Uh, should be lots of the village people uh, in the Navy here, you know, instead. <laughs> yeah, in the Navy. <laughs> Don't sing more than that, otherwise I have to pay for it. Anyway, um, thank you very much, Scott. Good to see you here again. Somehow you're, you're all full of piss and vinegar at the beginning of the show, and then you don't talk at all. But that's okay. I love He's seeing football again. You're our, you're our center square. Uh, Mike, thank you. Brian, 
Thank You're you. A little quiet tonight. Kevin was quiet tonight. Phil never would shut up anyway, so, you know. He, That's true. John Rockwell, <laughs> thank you. And, Tony, I don't think you've said a word tonight. Well, I was actually listening to you as well. Shut, shut up. Shut up. Just shut up. <laughs> shut the fuck up. Everybody. Okay, we'll have to pee. Everybody, wave, wave goodbye, would you? Ladies and gentlemen, there's our citizens panel. They're going away. And uh, I'm hanging up on them now so that the next guys can go on after me and, uh, and, and do this whole insanity over again. Because, again, insanity is defined by doing the same thing over and over again. We're getting the same result. The next show, of course, is Jack and Amy. They're here with the intersection. And then at 1 o'clock this morning, it's Connections. I'm Alex Bennett. I will see you again tomorrow night. Right here, same time, same station in life. And if you see her, tell her I love her, okay? Bye.